Hi, I'm Bob Layton, and I love talking comics. Well, hello, we're here at the second day of the LSCC with uh, Bob Layton, who's come all the way across from the US, uh, Iron Man legend. Um, uh, what have you been up to and how are you enjoying the con? What have I been up to? <laughs> well, I've been busy over the last 35 years. Well, well, would I mean, you like me to recap? I'm, I'm in at the con. <laughs> oh, at the con. Uh, I, it's been insane since I walked through the door here. I, I've, just, I've just been buried alive by uh, just uh, amazing uh, enthusiasm of the fans here. Uh, of course, my sketch list was filled up within the first hour for the entire convention. It's, and I feel bad for those uh, that see this that didn't get a sketch this time. I've already been pleading with them to bring me back, so you know I get a second chance to do that. But uh, it's it's been overwhelming, as a matter of fact. But, but a lot of fun. What would you say to other American creators about coming to uh, London? Get your ass over here. Wor worthwhile was it? What? Worthwhile. Wow, yeah, definitely. It was definitely fun. The, uh, they will. The English fans definitely appreciate the effort to, to come across the pond, spend some time with them. Um, I can see that you're advertising uh, Shambler behind you. Yeah, yeah, it's my actually my first feature film that uh, I uh, created and uh, I'm producing as well. But it's going to be a first of an experiment that uh, I'm trying to do. That why that's why I moved to Hollywood three and a half years ago uh, to create properties from the ground up, rather than just put out a comic book and kind of hope somebody licenses it one day and then does a really crappy version of it. <laughs> you know, right? I will try to do is build it up from the beginning, work with the production company, in this case Odyssey Pictures, to uh, do the, uh, create the property, create the movie, create the comic book, the whole, the whole thing, the whole package from the ground up. That way, you know, there's no disappointment because it is my vision that's being executed the way I thought it should be. So there will be Shambler Comics, there will be the movie we start production next month, if all goes well, you know, and uh, obviously they've spent the time to ship this booth over here, so I guess they're serious. So, uh, so I'm passing out Shambler stickers, or you can go to the website, shamblerthemovie.com, and uh, we'll have uh, weekly updates as we start to cast, and as we start doing clips, clips for the film, there'll be contests where uh, people can win a chance to be in the movie, or go to the premiere with me, which probably want to be in the movie and if we're going to premiere with me might not be that great uh, I tend to throw popcorn uh, but otherwise uh, it looks to be like a, a real for all fun time it's gonna be a good year um, for we, we can't speak to you without talking about the legacy that you've left behind in the in the Iron Man artwork so would you tell us a little bit about um, what influenced you who influenced you and and why why Iron Man well uh, I grew I always grew up uh, a fan of the Arthurian tales you know, I always read about Arthur and Knights of the Round Table, so it seems like that would be the character I would gravitate toward with my interest in comics. And I used to make my own little Iron Man comics when I was a kid. I was always frustrated because it never looked like metal to me, you know? And uh, I always thought that the, the Tony Stark persona was never, uh, I think, fully developed. Because it seemed to me being Tony Stark was just as much fun as being Iron Man, you know? So I think that's one of the things that David Michelini and I uh, that we did when we came on board was we, we looked at the entire premise of the book and decided that we really needed to flesh both sides out to make the armor believable to the readers that it was a really a machine and a machine that constantly evolves and that Tony Stark was a, a, a character that was larger than life that people would be happy being Tony Stark without ever having Iron Man in the picture so that way when he put the helmet on went out and did fantastic things we still related to him you know it was it was our guy Tony in there you know and I, I think the readers felt that, and I think that's a major difference between the creators that came before and what we did. Have you had to um, adapt the way that you do your artwork with the development of technology over the years that have passed? No, uh, again, because, uh, you know, I'm, I'm an old school guy, you know, I mean, uh, I mean, I know everybody loves to do stuff on computers or whatever, but I really like the tactile feeling of, you know, brush and pen to paper, you know, so... Uh, I mean, I, I've obviously utilized those things, and I have people that, that do those things for me, too. But uh, I'm still, I still love old school. Plus, you know, I mean, the one nice thing about being kind of a comic book legend now is that, you know, my original art sells for a lot of money. So it's, it's kind of like, even though computer stuff is nice, I'm like cutting myself out of a secondary income, you know? So it doesn't make a lot of sense, does it? Yes. Um, what... What does the future bring? I mean, I know the movie, a movie aside, what does the future bring in terms of comics for you? Well, like I said, most of my comic work now will be strictly uh, comic and film combined. 
I'm working on a project with Edward James Almost called Metal, M-E-T-T-L-E. Uh, and that will be uh, with him and his son, Michael Albos, and that will be a comic and film package as well. That's that's my career now, you know, is creating properties in Hollywood that will be developed as, you know, multimedia packages. Um, as far as just regular comic work, uh, I'm, I'm done. Those days are over. I, well, no, I mean, no offense, because like I said, I appreciate everything that happened to Iron Man and my days of Valiant and future comics and all that, but uh, uh, what's, there, what, what's there left to do that I haven't done? You know, and Ed almost said something to me once more. He, at one time when we were having dinner, he said, "What's one more episode of Battlestar Galactica going to do for my career?" And and I realized he was talking to me about this. He says, "Like as much as I love Iron Man, that's not. It's, at the end of the day, I need to you know develop and keep moving on, and so it's moving into new things." I mean, uh, Mark Miller came out with Kick Ass, and it started with a comic, and this whole concept of putting a comic out first and then making a movie second has this really taken Hollywood, um, uh, you know, by storm? Are people no, now because, listening? No, because every, now everybody makes comic books just to make movies, you know, and that's really not why you should make a comic. You should do a comic because you love doing comics, and, and that's why. For me, you know, I, I've always been involved in the business side, whether it was I was, you know, senior vice president of Valiant, you know, or, or, or running Future Comics my own, with my own distribution company. Uh, which, by the way, all the Future Comics uh, library is now available on iPad if anybody wants to, like, log on and download. Uh, there's a plug, how about that? Digitally available. Dig digitally available, yes, including the unpublished works. So, uh, uh, but um, for me, this is like, this is where I want to be right now. I, I, I appreciate my time at Marvel and, and, and everything like that, but, uh, and I love Iron Man. I'm still the biggest Iron Man fan in the world. You're still reading? No, I, no, no, I, I never read. Let's see, that's, that's a fallacy, but people will presume that I read. I only read stuff when I had to, when it related to the story. You didn't have time, you were doing no, I, no, I think it's real important to stay fresh. And reading other people's works, tends, you tend to like mimic, you tend to like, uh, always have that in your head. So I've always tried to not like snort the drug of choice, that they have comics to be my drug of choice. My, my artist friend says sensory deprivation helps creativity. Well, I, I think it's just a matter that you don't, if you're a cocaine dealer, you don't want to snort your own product because you'll be the world's lousiest cocaine dealer. So I think it's real important for me not to be an aficionado of, of my own product. You know, something Dick Giordano taught me, you know, you're either in the business of comics or you're a fan, you know, but don't be both. So it's not that I don't love comics, but it's not, it's really, I, I find that for me, staying fresh, because I'm not a young guy, look at me, okay? I'm not a young guy, but, but staying fresh and doing, doing young things is part of that is just not being influenced by the other body of work around me. You know, I'm just kind of trying to march to my own beat. Well, I'd like to say a big thank you from, not just from me at TC, but obviously all the fans that have got to see you in London and, and the UK. And we hope to see you again here soon. All right. Thank you so much. And, and don't forget to see Shambler next summer. Thank you very much. Thank you.